Welcome to the new Decision Point Trading Room. My name is Erin Swenlin, and I'm here with my dad, Carl Swenlin. I'd like to welcome you to the room. Just to remember, we are not registered investment advisors, so all trading decisions are your own. Anything we say in this trading room or in our blog should not be considered a call to action. All right, let's go ahead and get it started, Dad. What is going on in the market right now? Okie doke. <clears throat> First thing I want to mention is uh, we have our every day in our publication, we put the scoreboard for the market indexes. Right now, everything is looking neutral or sell. Uh, we are in a situation where uh, today, all of these could go to buy except for in New York Stock Exchange It's still not close enough but the the others we're probably going to get at least half of them switching to a buy an intermediate term buy signal as the 20 moves up through the uh, 50 ema and uh um that's it's been nice not having to maintain this from it's about a couple of months it's been sitting like this so we're getting some uh buy signals and uh we're going to have some in the um, we're going to have a, uh, let's see, healthcare is going to go to a long-term buy today, uh, probably. It's every Anything can change if we get a major uh, reversal in the, what prices are doing. But right now, it's looking very positive for the uh, um, indexes and sectors. So let me let me go to one of the... This is what I was want to look at is the the major indexes. Here's the Dow. Uh, I'm just going to flip through these quickly. The Dow, you can see, is uh, close to a cross 20, 50 crossover. S&P 500 probably is not going to make it today unless there's a big surge upward. But definitely tomorrow or the next day. Here's mid caps, and they are they are going to flip this today unless there's a major change in direction. Same with the small caps. Russell 2000, it's going to go to a buy, and Nasdaq 100 is go going to a buy, and uh, Nasdaq Composite is going to a buy, <laughs> and. Uh, New York Stock Exchange deposit notice that's still a lot of uh, room to go there yet. So possibly this week, but obviously we're going big time uh, signal changes today. So yeah, before at, I'm ahead. sorry, before you continue, because I you can answer this as you go, but uh, we do have a question. You know, has your long term view changed regarding the bear market? We're looking at all these signals you just reported. Um, obviously, it's looking bullish now. I, I'm not ready to say that uh, we're out of a bear market. Um, let's just look at the the one year daily. That gives us a little better idea. This declining tops line would need to be exceeded in order to break the uh, bears back. But of course, um, just a wild guess that's going to happen and then that'll be the end of it <laughs> south again so uh no i i'm obviously we've been at, at a month and a half we've been uh moving higher and certainly most recently in, in any vigorous way but uh i'm not i'm not going to say we're out of the bear mark because nothing has really changed in terms of the the fundamentals uh, surrounding the market. Notice that on uh, Friday, we had a nice upsurge in, in volume, SPX, total volume. And uh, I interpreted that as possibly a little blow off uh, action, which uh, looking at the back end again closer. Um, right now, we're, we're kind of churning uh, digesting this this move here 
this is reminding me of this move. So we'll, we'll see. Looking at gold, gold is looking really good for a change. I've been going up for a couple of weeks now. And uh, let's just look at the, do of the dollar index. And you see that's uh, trending downward now from, from short in the short term. There's a rising trend line that might staunch that uh, decline. USO also having a problem. And uh, let me look. Yeah, at it really is, was looking promising there. Of course, most people know I've been um, short term bullish on oil and some of the energy stocks related. I haven't changed my mind, I'll be honest. <laughs> right. Well, you still have this uh, line of support here that uh, could stop this. But right now, we've got a, we're in a, a downtrend. Treasuries, this is uh, the 20 year treasury representing long bonds. And uh, it is going to go to a uh, uh, 20 over the 50 silver cross buy signal today, unless of course there's a reversal. But right now we're sitting on a buy, a new buy signal for that treasuries. And uh, quickly, let's look at look at uh, big tech, Apple really still operating within the range of uh, Friday's movement. Adobe up. These are big tech. Amazon, again, more kind of like Apple, but making its way higher. This there's And there's Google. Actually, it's uh, bleeding off a little bit. Meta, up 3%. Microsoft, down a bit. Netflix, uh, yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> uh, NVIDIA. Some people here do. <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA is uh, uh, moving up nicely. So you got the big tech uh, moving up uh, strongly, and that is what has drugged the market along uh, for the last couple of weeks, actually, or actually a week, month and a half. So have I missed something? Uh, you know what? Someone wanted your thoughts on silver. You know, we look at uh, gold all the time, but maybe SLV. Okay, let me see SLV. If I can find it quickly. Yeah. The other one was UNG. Oh, there it is. There I it see. is. There, there is this. Yeah. Okay. Notice silver is fairly well correlated with gold, as you would expect. And uh, it's rallying, um, not quite as good as gold from mid-July, but certainly the last uh, three days, three trading days, it's, it's looking, looking good. Looks like it's at a decision point, if you will. The uh, May low and the 50-day EMA really are going to be the, the strong resistance right now. If we get a breakout there, I think I would be pretty bullish on silver. I'm a little bit um, leery of it right now. Well, as you would have a right to be, because gold, <laughs> silver, it's, it's always a heartbreaker. <laughs> Let's see if there are any questions for me here. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, I did get a quick question from a subscriber about our Friday uh, Decision Point Diamond Mine. That's for subscribers. I do 10 stock picks per week. And he's wondering how to get into the trading room that we do on Fridays, the Diamond Mine. And basically, I just wanted to let you know for all Diamond subscribers that all of the links are in every report. So you can re-register, register right before, but you will find those links in the report. And for those of you who aren't members and you love doing the trading rooms, Decision Point Diamonds definitely for you because you do get that additional Friday trading room and it is an hour and a half. So 
Okay, I don't see any that are specifically for me there, uh, uh, except UUP, which we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Let us uh, move along here. I'm going to share my screen. What I'm going to do is we'll look at the sectors just to get a, a sense of what's happening there. Certainly energy looking uh, a little bit weak currently. So I'm just going to come in here. First, I want to look at the candle glance. And this gives me a really good sense of what is going on in all of these sectors all on one page. Um, some of you stock charts subscribers may notice that it looks different from maybe your candle glance. If you want to use my candle glance style, any of the chart styles you're seeing in today's trading room, uh, send me an email, Aaron at decisionpoint.com, and I can send you the chart styles so that you can use the um, charts exactly the way I do. So there you go. The only exception is our sector charts. Uh, those are just for subscribers. So as you look at this, you were correct, Carl. I mean, you see, I should call you dad. I, I, I struggle with whether I call you Carl or dad um, when we're doing professional things. So, um, but you were mentioning all of those silver crosses coming up and the, right now, those sectors that are leading in that regard are discretionary, which is really coming into um, its own here. It is hitting overhead resistance, but it beat out resistance here at 160, which really made it look good. Uh, I liked this sector going into this week, particularly uh, in the autos and restaurant and bars area. We talked about that on Friday with our subscribers. And I threw a couple symbols out at them. And I happen to know that those are doing very well today. Uh, Staples is breaking out. It really had spent last week mostly consolidating, but we did get that big breakout, but then a, a pullback toward the breakout area for consumer staples. But you can see we have the golden cross of 50 above the 200. We have the 20 above the 50. Um, PMO looking great. So this was an area I was feeling a little bit um, unimpressed with, but it's looking like it's coming back to life as far as getting out of this trading range that has been in for so long. Energy did the breakout above the 50, but it is pulling back. It's down two and 4.45% now, but it is holding above the 50 day EMA. I still think energy looks pretty healthy at this point, but we can look under the hood a little more closely. XLF, you can see the breakout above the 20 and 50, but we do not have the silver cross 20 going a Above the 50 is our silver cross. Healthcare's looking pretty good now. It's been mostly consolidating in a trading range, but last week it did break out. It's pulled back somewhat. I like healthcare, but it's certainly not one of the stronger areas in my opinion. Industrials really taking off last week. Looks like it's gonna see a continuation, but right now kind of consolidating on that 200 day EMA. Silver cross is on the way. Materials really got hit hard, similar to energy. They both have a little bit of margin that they still have to make up in order to get that silver cross, but it's looking pretty good. I don't like with materials coming up to this resistance level and then immediately turning down. I, that does concern me somewhat. Real estate, nice breakout above the 200, but pulling back slightly today. Uh, PMO doing well, looks like the 20 has, uh, well, is about to cross above the 50-day EMA, either today or tomorrow. XLK technology. So two of the aggressive sectors, XLY and XLK, are leading here uh, as far as the market. And now they are above 200-day EMAs, at least for technology. We should set, see that in discretionary. And utilities made a big pop last week. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of consolidation of that move, but overall the momentum is still very positive. So let's dive in a little bit more into the technology and consumer discretionary sector charts. And as I said, these are available to subscribers of either the DP Alert or the DP Diamonds. You can uh, take a look at these with Carl's annotations on it anytime you would like. So looking under the surface here at XLY, I really liked it on Friday 
really particularly because we were seeing this acceleration in the Silver Cross Index, and we had really nice participation of stocks above their 20, 50, and 200, but not really that overbought. They did tick back just a little bit in that participation, but it's really keeping them out of, at least this day, it's keeping it out of really extreme market. This, this really, um, these are really overbought readings. But currently in the short term, we're having a very strong rally. So I didn't um, discount that. I, I felt like that was still, these were good numbers. And you can see stochastics um, oscillating now above 80, which uh, suggests internal strength. And of course, relative strength here for consumer discretionary has done quite well. And as I said, really, when you look under the hood at the industry groups within consumer discretionary, Clearly, autos and restaurants and bars are showing the most strength. And we can look at that shortly, but I wanted to finish up with our deep dive here into these aggressive sectors. XLK, as I said, getting that breakout for the second day above the 200-day EMA, very positive, already had its silver cross. PMO is rising beautifully. You can see silver cross shows now over half of the members in technology have a silver cross. So that is also really good foundation to see technology continue higher. And honestly, this area, as well as discretionary, those are two areas that are gonna usually lead the market higher. And if they are healthy, we should expect to see more upside. You can see also under the surface, really great participation of stocks above their 20 and 50. Yes, overbought, but I would say you can even see back here, it can stay overbought for some time. So this was going into January, of course, before this bear market really got itself going. But ultimately, we do want to see the um, we want to have really robust readings on the participation if we want to see a continuation of a move. So I like the way that looks. All right, I had a few. We'll move into some earnings that I have written down that are going to be reporting over the next day or two that I thought might be interesting. I think I saw some of these requested. So let's go ahead and look at a few of them. First, Caterpillar will be reporting tomorrow. And a look at their chart. It's making it's a little suspect what might happen tomorrow, seeing that uh, investors are kind of cool right now as far as continuing this rise to the upside. We got stopped here at the 200 day EMA, a little bit of a pullback. We have a lot of great technicals under the surface here, but ultimately, this is a little concerning not hitting that 200 day EMA. If we get some uh, a great reaction to earnings, obviously we'll see that breakout above 200. And at that point, I think that Caterpillar will look um, particularly interesting as we say. AMD is also reporting tomorrow. Of course, one of the big name semiconductors. We have a really nice basing pattern, nice cup shaped uh, rounded bottom. And we've got the breakout here above this short term overhead resistance and this gap resistance. So that's very healthy seeing that continue higher. Of course, 200 day EMA is coming up as resistance as well as $110, which is that June top. So we will be paying close attention, right, to AMD and seeing how those earnings affect this. Are we going to get that breakout above the 200? But so far, you can see relative strength is really improving here under the surface for AMD against the S&P, as well as against its industry group of the semiconductors. In fact, really starting to push forward on its relative strength in regard to the group, which means this is going to be one of the leader. Uh, it already is one of the leaders in this particular industry group. Also reporting, PayPal will be reporting tomorrow. And it's been on a nice run here. It's in technology, as I noted with some of these others. It is up against overhead resistance at $90, though. And you can see that the group itself has been struggling somewhat. PayPal is doing better than the group, which is why it's doing slightly better than the S&P. But I think this one will also be very interesting to see what it does, because we are hitting that $90 mark of overhead resistance. Finally, Wednesday, we've got CVS reporting. 
They're one of the big names stuck um, underneath this overhead resistance level. You can see the group itself is not doing very well, but CVS is doing well against the group, just not enough to do well against the S&P. So I, I'm a lot less impressed with this particular chart than some of the others we looked at. Yum, Yum Brands, you can see, has had a nice breakout. They report on Wednesday, we see a nice bullish engulfing candlestick right now in preparation for those earnings and increase in momentum, positive RSI. But we have a little bit of a problem as far as relative strength. Despite being in a nice rising trend, it's still underperforming the S&P. As you can see, this relative strength line showing a declining trend. And part of the problem is you have a strong enough industry group, but Yum is not performing well against its group and consequently not against the S&P. We have two, one more and that is energy transfer. They will be reporting also on Wednesday. You can see like many of the energy stocks making a nice move to the upside. Looks like we have kind of that longer, um, kind of a hammer look to it. Hammer candlesticks are really more relevant at lows like you can see back here, but still it is a positive uh, candlestick because it tells you that bulls have pulled the market up from those intraday, or, pulled this stock up from its intraday lows. Silver Cross is on the way. So it's really lined up well to do, um, you know, to have a nice continuation of this breakout. But, you know, earnings, you never know, which is why I try to avoid holding into earnings myself. All right, so those are the, the important earnings or kind of the big earnings names over the next two days that we might be looking at. So let's go ahead Oh, I wanted to look at energy because we always look at energy as far as that sector. It's always moving around looking interesting. All right, so it is a big pullback today of 2%, but really that rising trend is not being compromised. The PMO is not being compromised. We'll know these numbers under the surface after the close because they don't update until then. Uh, but it looks like we're still in pretty good stead here for energy. At least I'm still looking at it in a, with a bullish uh, eye. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll move into some symbol requests. Are there any questions in there that you wanted to answer? Uh, no. Okay. Let's see, can you show all the various sectors, please, um, which are leading and lagging? Okay, well, we did kind of go through that on our sector overview. Really, most of the sectors look healthy, in my opinion. There's There aren't too many that are just sickly at this point. I think some have just taken more time to rev up to the upside. And like I said, XLP, defensive sector, is uh, interestingly really moving nicely. All right. I think I will have you read me off some of these symbols. Try UNG. All right, let's get it started with UNG. It's been really an interesting chart, really. You know, we had this big decline bounce somewhat at, off of the 200 day EMA, more so off of $18, which was a support level right here, a couple touches. That's right here, this one and this one. These are like textbook reverse island formations. I know I've pointed those out on uh, the chart before to some of the subscribers, but um, reverse islands, you get the big gap up. And then the next day you get the big gap down, leaving what looks like an island out here. Right now though, I mean, I don't know your, your opinion, Dad, but this has a very flaggish look to me. I'm not particularly thrilled with the indicators. I mean, the PMO looks like it's topping here. Let me get a thumbnail on there. Yeah, the PMO is still rising, but stochastics are now back below 80. But that uh, flag looks kind of interesting. What are you thinking? I think it's a little bit deep for a flag. Mm -hmm. That would just be my uh, first impression. And I'm not saying it is a positive at this no. point. 
it does look a little suspect here for UNG. I mean, it had a really nice um, move up into last week, but the end of the week, it really just fell out of bed and it was looking like a nice little cup and handle um, could maybe be considered that, but this is kind of a pointed bottom. I, I look for more of a rounded bottom for the more of a cup shape uh, than a, a V shape here, a cone shape. So natural gas, you know, I, I see the key support levels. Let's use the inspect tool because that was the question. This um, right down here, I would say, is the next level of, you know, intermediary support. I don't want to use the, the term intermediate term, but um, right in here at that $23 level is where I see the next support level coming in. We had gap support here, which looks like it could hold. You can see that gap there. Uh, but at this point, it does look really suspect. This is kind of a deep, quick decline. The 20-day and 50-day EMA could certainly provide support as well in the short term. But I would be looking right around uh, $23. That's kind of where I would be looking as the next support level. It's a double top, really. That's the yeah. oh, most let's... obvious. Uh... There's the weekly chart. So you can see that that is lining up to be a double top. So, you know, in that case, if we do get the $23 support level, you can see that does hit right about in here to $22, $23. But uh, yeah, a big double top like that could really tear UNG apart <laughs> and put it way, way low. But, you know, we have a weekly PMO that's that just gave us a crossover, Dad. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, but it's awfully overbought. Agreed. Okay. How about Apple? Let's look at Apple. We looked at it earlier, but. Oops, uh, I hate when I do that. I'm thinking of the word uh, not in the stock symbol. <laughs> okay, there we go. Trust me, guys, I know Apple's symbol. <laughs> All right, so a look at Apple. I mean, it's also had a really nice move. This is one of the reasons the market has been doing well. This is clearly one of the leadership stocks, so not a surprise. Do have what could be a little bit of a reverse island setting up here, but overall, the rising trend looks very strong. Um, PMO still looking strong, getting overbought, though, like you were talking about. Uh, RSI is about to move overbought when it gets above 70. That's considered overbought. And you can see that typically when the RSI gets overbought, it's not a good thing. Uh, we usually will see a decline come off that. So we do need to be on our toes here just because we're seeing um, the RSI get overbought. But at the same time, this is a pretty powerful um, longer term rally, if you will. Stochastic still above 80. So, you know, and relative strength is still looking good. I mean, I think Apple still has some upside potential. And if the market is to move higher here it, with this bear market rally, certainly we will see Apple move higher. But, I, you know, I think it's a pretty decent chart right now for Apple. Yeah, at this point, it's a hold for sure. Mm -hmm. I would say so. We're going to get a little dicey once we get up here to 180. That's going to be really the biggest test, obviously, if it can get above those all-time highs. But weekly, our um, weekly PMO is looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead. I'm going to look at the five-minute chart. We haven't done that yet, and I wanted to give everybody kind of a quick understanding of how we do our timing, at least how I do my timing. There you go to enter and exit stocks. So we'll put Apple up over here. So yes, yeah, so I think uh, Dan and I both agree um, Apple would be a hold looking pretty good there. All right. Uh, so when we we do this chart here, the daily chart, we look at daily and weekly charts to decide whether we want it or whether we want to get rid of it. We come to the five minute candlestick chart to figure out when is the best time to let it go or the best time to get in. And so those are, um, I have mechanical buy points and mechanical sell points. So a mechanical buy point, a conservative buy point, as I often call it, is a PMO crossover with a positive RSI. Now, that's the mechanical signal to buy. 
But there, of course, are gray areas. You can be a little more aggressive and get in when the PMO is turning up. You could get aggressive if the RSI is positive, and even though the PMO isn't doing what you want, it still has some opportunity to move higher. But uh, and you can look at price patterns. For example, we had one, it looks like one, two buy signals come in, possibly two more. And if I were sitting and looking at this chart, those might have been mechanical buy signals, but not something that I would want to enter just simply because of the price pattern. It just is moving sideways. It's consolidating. Um, it, it had that huge decline in the morning. So to me, I would be a little less apt to want to jump in. I don't see any really solid buy points that have come in today. Uh, sell points are pretty easy. When the PMO turns over, as soon as you have negative momentum, more than likely you're going to see follow through decline, which is what we saw here. So if you'd watch this five minute chart on Friday and you were looking to sell and you know, book some profits on this gap up, then you would have sold right here when the PMO turned over. And certainly that would have saved you quite a bit of downside just by watching a five minute candlestick chart. So this point, don't see a buy point for Apple. Um, even a sell point is, you know, with the PMO moving sideways, I really like a more defend, definitive entry and exit. And this just isn't there for me. So I know I would be holding off on a purchase of Apple. Okay, new symbol, DVN, Delta Victor November. Yes, Devon Energy. Um, this has been certainly a favorite of mine. I do not own it now, but I have in the past. I think it's a pretty great stock. Um, they pay a, a really decent dividend here. And you can see that uh, it tends to have a leadership role with its group. Not so much when we went through this big rally back here, but still it, uh, it, it tends to do pretty well against its group. Obviously, like I said, May through August, it's not looking that impressive. Um, certainly started to pick it up against the group here uh, last week, meaning it kind of moved up but not and moved down with the group, but not as uh, a little bit um, in, a, in a better manner. Uh, you can see against the SPY, it is sort of uh, getting better. Like I said, I personally am still interested in energy. I still have my energy stock um, that I like. Um, this pullback is coming right at the support level and the 50-day EMA. Short-term rising trend is still intact, but we do need to watch carefully here. That PMO does look like it's slowing down. And again, we looked at the relative strength and it's kind of uh, not great. So 3% down move though, and we don't see the PMO turning over that, that's a good sign as well. But is there a buy point here? So there was really, the conservative buy point didn't come in until the PMO was just turning over. So really no solid buy point today as, as far as our mechanical one, but you did get a pretty solid PMO crossover. The problem is we, if we didn't have a positive RSI. And so that does, you know, put us in a more um, vulnerable position. So that's why I usually like to wait for the RSI to get to that positive area. You can see that that's helpful. This just has a really ugly look to it. I have to admit, um, kind of a symmetrical triangle here or a pennant on this gap down this morning. So not looking too healthy right now, but I don't see it as um, a stock that you want to really necessarily get rid of right now. If you broke down below the 50 and or 20 day EMAs, yeah, I, I would definitely be on the sell side personally. Okay, how about RXR? Okay, and I do have one um, that came through email I wanna look at as well, RXRX. I'm, yeah, I was wondering, it must be a pharmaceutical. <laughs> yeah. So sure enough, well, it's a biotech, but certainly involved in that area. All right, let's start over here with the daily chart. I've liked biotechs for a while. This one really hasn't been um, performing that well. And you can see really July, the performance of biotech started to really fall off and not uh, show very well. Consequently, you know, this one was doing about, it was doing better than its groups relative strength, but that kept it just in line with the S&P. 
right now we're in a bear market rally, so that's not a, a horrible thing. Um, but you're in this trading range. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look super exciting. You're halfway up through that trading range. Now I can see, based on the fact that the way this trading is, getting up to here is still a 10%, 11% move to the upside. So it's not like there isn't any more upside if you were to play this as a trading range, which it seems to be pretty um, true to over the last a month and or more. So there is certainly some upside potential here, um, but I don't, I don't buy stocks where the PMO is pointed downward and we can put the thumbnail on here and that PMO has turned down. Um, and we don't want, uh, generally, if you have a stock that has negative momentum, it generally is going to move down. Uh, at best, it's gonna move sideways. So I avoid any stock that is on the decline. And this is coming out of a decline on the PMO out of overbought territory. Certainly stochastics are rising. They're now in positive territory. RSI is still positive. So there are some uh, bullish uh, implications on the chart, but just being in an industry group that is now starting to um, underperform, I think is gonna put it at a disadvantage. Certainly there is more upside to be had. But again, I stay away from stocks where the PMO is moving lower. As far as buy points go, buy point came in earlier this morning on that crossover with the positive RSI. So the last buy point was at about $8.36. Clearly we're trading much higher than that, but we're trading on a nice breakout from highs that we saw last Friday. So, you know, it, it looks pretty good. Although I have to say a filled black candlestick for this last five minutes. Um, doesn't look too good. Filled black candlesticks, bearish candlesticks usually lead to a candlestick that goes to the downside after you see them, or they can start, start a little bit of a declining trend, as you can see back here, and you can see back here. But overall, um, looking pretty good on the five minute today. Okay, uh, next one, CHPT. All right. I forgot though, I'm going to look at the one that came in through email. It is from a subscriber. So I have to give them a little bit of uh, priority here. All right. Wow. Look at that similar um, five minute chart. All right. So it had a down day Friday and it is um, lower on the day, but you can see certainly making up ground from that big decline this morning. When you look under the surface here, stochastics are positive and rising. Somebody asked me a little bit about stochastics. You know, if the PMO um, is pointed downward and stochastics are rising and vice versa, you know, how do you um, determine, you know, how do you see that? And what I told them is stochastics, one of the reasons I have them on the chart tend to be a little bit more of a leading indicator and the PMO is a little bit slower. So I think stochastics will often give you that, oh, this is a flag, I should be looking at this chart. And if the PMO is pointed downward, to me, it's a watch list, it's watch list material because as soon as that PMO starts to flatten or maybe look like it's gonna turn up, um, that tells you stochastics were likely correct. And uh, that would be a good time to um, get bullish. But typically, I really am not, like I said, I'm, I, I'm going to pound the pavement here, pound my desk. I don't buy stocks where the PMO is pointed downward. So stochastics may be giving us a hint here that things are looking good, but uh, and the PMO is still rising. So the stock looks pretty good still, Richard. Um, the the performance though is not very impressive to me and it is a stock that's been in a really huge downtrend long way from a silver cross certainly you know miles and miles away from a golden cross um, but looks like a buy point coming in right now with that pmo bottoming above the signal line and the rsi being positive knowing what we know about price action though i think i would be waiting for a breakout here just to make sure that this is going to stick all right checkpoint yes the hpt charge point charge point my bad it's so funny for years i just didn't know symbols and now i 
I'm like Tom Bowley, man. I used to be, I used to give him a symbol and he'd know, or I'd say the name of the com com uh, company and he'd already be typing in the, the symbol. Now I know how he does it. <laughs> Looking at so many all the time. All right, specialty retailers, this is uh, in discretionary, which is looking pretty good. This stock though, you know, has been in a trading range. I mean, it doesn't look as exciting as some of the other stocks we've seen. Obviously a big decline today, but holding this short-term support, mm, not really, barely. PMO is turning downward. Um, RSI is still positive. Stochastics are still telling us this is gonna be okay but the PMO is starting to turn over. It has done some pretty, uh, it looks pretty good against the S&P. I don't know, dad, I, this is one of those sort of middle of the road ones when I look at it. Right, it's in a trading range now for two months. Yeah, so, and it's at the top of it. So, you know, when you play trading ranges, obviously you wanna try and get in as close to the bottom of the range because if it's gonna stay true to that range, now you've given yourself less risk. You're now at a lot of risk here at this one because the fact it's at the top of a range that it's been pretty true to. So uh, and not to say that this is not a good stock, we did just get a silver cross, but I would need uh, more confirmation, particularly a breakout, I think at this point from that trading range because more than likely it's gonna to head toward the bottom of it despite being in a strong sector. And if we look here over at the five minute, sell point came in right about here. That would have uh, gotten you out on the, you know, about a third of the way, at least from that decline. Uh, buy points have been really, it looks like it's one is trying to come in with the PMO, um, but RSI staying negative. I think I wouldn't be, I don't think I would be a buyer today. Okay. I'm not sure, sure I would be a buyer anyway at this time, Stu. Somebody wants to know about PFIX. Yes, and I want you to talk about this one because I know we've talked about this one quite a bit and it does come in on you know what, what our thoughts are about interest rates. Um, in fact, I'll, I think honestly, I wanna turn it over to you if you're okay with that to look at some of the yields. We didn't really talk about the treasury yields going and what's going on over there. I'm, I'm not really uh, prepared. <laughs> 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 fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So let's look at PFIX, but I'm going to just, let me see as I update this. I think this is leveraged, is it not? Um, it's, it's a hedge. Um, I think we were saying it was, it kind of was uh, more true to the 10 year yield. So it basically plays the yield itself. Um, the rate itself. So if that rate is moving upward, then PFIX is going to move upward. If it's moving down, obviously um, PFIX will move down. But I wanted to just look really quickly at our yield array in the short term. This is a chart we talk about every day in the DP alert, where we give our overall market analysis. We'd let you know the trends, conditions, where we think the market's going, but we also look at Bitcoin yields, dollar, gold, among others. So as I know I've been talking about for quite a while is most of these long-term rates, obviously including the 10 year, which is in um, brown here, have all been in these declining trends. The only one that's been in rising trends, the only ones are the one and three month interest rates. And even the three month one is starting to pull back at this point. You know, as long as we're seeing these declining trends in all of these longer term rates, it has to, you know, temper what you're expecting on this particular ETF. Well, and it, what's, what's happening, it looks to me, uh, is that you've got uh, oops. short rates are going to be higher than long rates. And you know, inversion. So we're looking at we have we have some inversions already, but uh, right now the the uh, one month is is uh, headed higher, the most vigorously on the whole chart. You know, and uh, yes. So. so you know, with all these declining trends, you know, playing an interest rate ETF, a hedge, if you will, toward bonds, I think is a real dangerous 
game right now. And look at the 10 year yield. This is one that we do have annotated and you can see lost really important support, really a rounded top, possibly head and head and shoulders pattern here with a break below the confirmation line, gap down that led into this. Certainly we have some short-term support here at 2.5%, but ultimately, you know, 2.4 looks a little bit more likely 2.3 at that 200 day EMA. That's going to kind of be the line in the sand, in my opinion, is that 200 day EMA. Uh, we lose that particular area of support and, you know, we're looking at a, a pretty big decline. A lot of people uh, are getting more um, bullish about bonds. I know you looked at that chart. It looks like it's ready for the breakout, but we don't have it quite yet. Um, so PFIX, mm, Beth, I'm not a fan of it. No, certainly not at this point. It's, it's trending down. All right. I'm cleaning out some of these. Uh, let's see. Okay. KBWB looks like it's next for Lillian. And we're doing very well on time. We could probably go back and look at the market before we leave just to see what's going on and our opinions on that. So, you know, it's been in consolidation here for a while. Um, this is the bank ETF. Financials certainly have been, you know, improving along with the market, but I don't know. It's just one of those sectors that I just haven't found exciting. And the banks, you know, really kind of rule that sector. They really take up a good portion of that sector. And banks are, again, you can see this ETF that follows them just really not doing a whole lot. You know, we've looked at a lot of charts here uh, and sectors that are showing a lot more strength. So that right off the bat to me is, um, you know, I'm not saying that this is a bad uh, ETF here by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying that there, as I often say in my diamond mine, there are better choices. Reminds me of being a mom when the kids leave, make good choices. <laughs> So I think that this one may be, you know, it, it just look like, looks like it's going to be a slow mover here. But certainly PMO is now in positive territory. RSI is positive. But look, here's your relative strength against the S&P, and it is declining. So it's been in a sideways move, and the market's been moving upward. So again, this probably wouldn't be somewhere that I would be interested in. I would be a lot more interested in some of those areas in tech that are starting to show strength and certainly consumer discretionary looking good right now. SMH. Every time I see that symbol SMH right now, it's a uh, on the internet, uh, the internets um, in social media, SMH means shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know that I'd be shaking my head at this particular chart. It actually looks very healthy to me. This is the kind of chart that I definitely like. The only issue, again, I'm always all about momentum, which does look great, but I also want some breakouts. We did get this short-term breakout, and so that is A number one. We're getting a silver cross coming in here. This is the semiconductor ETF, and you know, semiconductors are still looking pretty good and they are, the technology area is still leading the market as we've, as we've been talking about earlier today. So liking this rally, I like the silver cross coming, but we do have to be mindful of overhead resistance at the 200 day and at 250. And that is about 4.6% away. So I usually do that to determine my upside potential, if you will, kind of that minimum upside potential before it'll hit some sort of overhead resistance. And so that also really, I, I take that into account when I'm doing my decision point diamonds because I wanna present stuff that really have a lot of upside potential. This one certainly does. I like semiconductors. I like technology right now. Um, I like what's going on on this chart. However, I don't like the five minutes so much. If you're ready to get into this one, we're definitely not seeing a buy point. The last buy point came in right here where you had the crossover, the PMO, positive RSI, 
And that was at 238.05. We're at 238.35. So this is another thing that you can consider doing when, um, if you come in late, which I often do, I don't get up for the market open guys, not on the West Coast. <laughs> so I get to these five minute charts late. I just do. And so one of the, the methods I will use is look at the price on the prior buy point. And when we get close to that prior buy point, I can then make this decision. Do I want to get in here? Is the PMO doing what I want it to do? And even though I may not have the crossover on the PMO yet, maybe I won't have that positive RSI, just seeing it, the price bounce off of you know, the, the support levels that you saw at that prior buy point, you know, that's one way that you can play a five minute candlestick chart to also help you do better. We talked a bit about the QQQ in the SPY. So I'm gonna leave that one, Rocky. If you uh, watch the recording at the very beginning, um, Carl talked about that. Um, buy gas instead of gold and fill it in your tank and go to the office. <laughs> Lakshmi says gold is for fools and Indians. Oh my goodness, dad. You threw a lot of shade at, it, at us there, Lakshmi, because you know that we've been pretty um, bullish on gold. And I know we looked at this chart earlier and I, you know, I was very suspect of gold, but right now this is such a great basing pattern. And yeah. that's the you know, best that's looked at a, a long time. Yeah. Positive yeah. RSI, stochastics above 80. I mean, there's a lot of good going on here. I'd have to say filled black candlestick, another filled black candlestick is a little bit concerning, but this is a great basing pattern. I think the problem a lot of people have with gold is it, it you know, number one, it doesn't do what it's supposed to. <laughs> I think that's the number one problem with gold, but it doesn't, the upside potential is certainly not as exciting. It's not as sexy as say your semiconductors, et cetera, but it, you know, like bonds, it's just one of those, you know, legs on the stool. In my opinion, I've, I always hold gold. Um, I've had it long, long ago. So obviously these dips are, you know, they're interesting, but they're not going to kill my position. And, and I have to say, really, what I do is look for times to add to my position. And that's exactly what I've done right back here on that breakout above the 20 day EMA. So I know you expanded your position a little bit earlier than than this, but um, I don't know. I mean, I think gold still looks good. You know, maybe I'm foolish. <laughs> All right. My parents don't know how to read and write, but they invest in gold. Yeah. You know, seriously, it's, it's just um, one of those steps on, you know, like bonds. So, all right. Looks like we have five more minutes left and two more symbols left. So I will cover, cover those and we'll look very quickly at what's happening in the market before we leave. All right. Oh, you said no. K. K-R-U-S. I can tell you there's not much happening. It's just it's just running flat today. So yeah, the market. Yeah. Kind of digesting, I think, what uh happened last uh week uh, with earnings, some of those big name earnings. Um so the restaurants just uh it's in discretion or indiscretionary restaurants, bars, which I like, really nice breakout here. I think my main concern would be. Uh, it being overbought, you know, you have an overbought PMO, but we do have a bottom above the signal line, which I always find especially bullish coming on a nice breakout to the upside. RSI is pretty overbought, but we can see, you know, previously, I mean, it stayed overbought for 10 trading days. So it's not like we can't hold overbought conditions. As we often say, you know, you overbought conditions will persist in a bull market. And this is certainly set up in a bull market configuration. So I'm liking what's going on under the surface. As I said, restaurants and bars was one of those areas that I was looking at to do well this week. And so far, so good on that. Let's look at the five minute. I'm sorry, I had the wrong one up here. Uh, not a buy point. So I do like this. The prior buy point was right here at about 85.53. We're at, let's see, 
So, you know, it's, I would be watching this area of support here. It's kind of tough, right? Because this one is, doesn't trade with a high volume at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and what I'll do is I move to a 15 minute. Now we're starting to see some action here. We don't, uh, we still don't have that PMO crossover yet, but RSI is positive and not overbought on this chart. So I think your buy point might be coming, but I would be, I would be really eagle eye watching at this level right around 8530. I, th I think that could be the really interesting level as far as an entry. And last one we have is KWeb. And this is an ETF. Yes, the China Internet ETF. Wow, big breakdown. If anything, I can look at this and say, wow, I'd be wanting to short this. Um, You've got the breakdown below this support level. It broke, uh, it came up to the 20, couldn't handle it. We have uh, lost the silver cross, that 20 day EMA is dropped below the 50. And that 50 is so far below the 200. That is clearly a long term sell signal on this one. PMO topping now in negative territory. I'm not sure if you were looking at this one uh, as a possible buy or as a possible short, but this one is pretty ugly with that loss. I would be looking at more as a short with the opportunity for it to end up down here at about $24, and that's a 12 and three quarter percent decline on that one. So um, don't like this one very much at all. Um, buy points, we have to think the other way if we're going to do this as a short. So we would be wanting to look for those uh, PMO tops. Don't have that right now. Looks like it wants to move upward. So I don't think it's a good short opportunity to buy um, to short right now. I don't think we're at that point. But certainly a look at this daily chart and PU. <laughs> 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 this is not not a good one. But like I said, if you're shorting it, it might be a good thing. All right, we're at the close, 45 seconds. Looks like the market has moved into negative territory, down just slightly. Really, as you said, just kind of staying sideways, trying to figure out what it wants to do. That's all we have here for the decision point trading room this week. Uh, any parting thoughts from the guru over there, Dad? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> good luck and good trading, I think, is it. <laughs> there you go. All right. We will see you next week uh, at the same time. You'll see the recording 3 p.m. Eastern on Stock Charts. If you want to join us live, just click below. You will see the link and you can come in at noon Eastern and talk to us directly and ask uh, Dad all the questions you've ever wanted to ask. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck and good trading. And I'm going to stop this recording. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.